Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Some big stories happening over the weekend and overnight. We're continuing to follow the latest after those deadly tornadoes ripped through parts of the Midwest and a prayer vigil interrupted by gunfire near Houston in Baytown. We have those stories coming up in just a bit. And taking a look outside with a live cam, we're at 54 degrees right now. We started the morning in the 40s, but as you can see, it's warming up a little bit. I'm going to have to put this sweater dress I'm wearing away for at least a week, right? Right. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, December 13th. Hope you got a lot done over the weekend. We'll talk more about the weather coming up in just a moment. That's right. I hope you had a great weekend. And for now, let's look at today's 9 at 9. The Harris County Sheriff says one person has died, 13 others were injured in a drive-by shooting during a candlelight vigil near Houston last night. There were about 50 people at the vigil. One of the injured is believed to be a young child. No suspect description or arrest for the shooting have been announced. Dozens of people in five states have been killed by tornadoes that leveled entire communities on Friday night. But the death toll at a Kentucky candle factory is not as devastating as initially feared. Still, the Kentucky governor expects the statewide toll to reach at least 50. So far, 14 people are dead in four other states, Illinois, Tennessee, Arkansas, and Missouri. The Omicron COVID variant has now been identified at least 29 states and Washington, D.C. Top U.S. health officials say the latest data on Omicron indicates the variant spreads easily, but is still unclear if it leads to a milder disease. Meanwhile, the Delta variant is still wreaking havoc. Over at least 40 states reported a rise in new cases at some point in the past two weeks. New York State is implementing a temporary mask mandate effective today. New Yorkers will be required to wear a mask in all indoor public spaces unless businesses have a vaccine requirement. The new mask mandate will remain in effect until at least January 15th. 15-year-old Ethan Crumbly is due in court today for a procedural hearing. He's being charged as an adult for the November 30th school shooting in Michigan. At his next hearing, the judge will decide whether there's enough evidence to send the case to trial. It's possible a trial could be put on hold if his attorney seeks a mental competency exam. The trial of a Minnesota police officer charged in the shooting death of Dante Wright opens its second week of testimony today. A medical examiner is expected to walk jurors through Wright's autopsy. The 20-year-old was killed in April after being pulled over by police for expired license plate tags and an air freshener hanging from his rearview mirror. Officer Kim Potter resigned two days after the shooting. The House panel investigating the January 6th Capitol insurrection is set to recommend contempt charges against former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows. It comes as lawmakers release new details about documents Meadows handed over to the committee. They say some of the documents describe Meadows' efforts to help President Donald Trump overturn his defeat in the presidential election. Inflation might not last as long as it did half a century ago. Consumer prices are currently at a 39-year high, but economists are predicting that prices will moderate next year and not hit the levels seen in the 70s or early 80s. But experts also say inflation will still be higher than it was before the pandemic. Back to the office plans are being modified again for many companies. The Wall Street Journal says the rise of cases this winter, along with the emergence of the Omicron variant, and court action around the Biden administration's vaccine or test requirement for private businesses are leading some companies to rethink in-person plans. And that's today's Nine at Nine. I know the work week just started, but we can't help but look ahead and start thinking about all the other things we need to do before Christmas this coming weekend. But it sounds like this may be a weekend to do things indoors. I know we were talking about gift wrapping, possibly yes. indoors this weekend. Might be a good idea, right, Justin? Not a bad idea. It, you know, it's it's going to be one of those weeks. It's going to look kind of like this each and every day. A lot of clouds, a lot of grayness because uh, this humidity surging back in is bringing clouds with it. And these clouds are going to stick around for most of the week. By the time we get to the weekend, though, we'll see some big changes yet again. We've got another cold front in the forecast right now. Temperatures in the mid 50s, so it's cool, not cold. We've lost some of that cold air that we had over the weekend. And uh, now things will really moderate today. Here's a look at the next uh, three days. 64 today, mostly cloudy. In the next couple of days, we'll deal with some fog and drizzle in the morning time. And then some warm afternoons. I mean, by Wednesday and Thursday, we're going to be close to 80 degrees, which is not far off from some records. So we're, we're back into that warmth. Well, looking at the uh, satellite picture, you can see the clouds have surged back in. And that has 
Uh, allowed temperatures again to stay pretty mild this morning, but it will also keep temperatures from warming up all that much this afternoon. And looking uh, down towards the coast, there are a few showers out there. Most of these are light, not going to be a problem, probably won't make it up into our area. So here are the headlines. Well, lots of clouds, more humidity. We mentioned that warm, humid, cloudy week. And then by Saturday, strong cold front. And there is a good chance for rain with this front, uh, especially as we get into Saturday. So looking at the temperatures today, up to 64 for high, mostly cloudy. East, southeast, Julie winds 5 to 10. We're going to take a look at that 7 day forecast coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Sounds good. Thank you, Justin. A look out with Transguide. There's Loop 1604. Things are moving there. And there's Loop 410 at Northwest Military. Things are moving there as well. In your morning headlines, an NFL team, the Denver Broncos, honor one of their former teammates with a unique huddle. And a real gingerbread house. David Sears is here to explain all of this. The big question is, is it edible? Right. Is Pro it? Prob probably. I, I don't know. We'll okay. let you decide. But first, we're going to start with this. An NFL team playing homage to one of their former teammates. The different Broncos took the field yesterday with heavy hearts after the passing of one of their former players, receiver Demarius Thomas. They started the game with only 10 men in the huddle. The open space was once occupied by Thomas. The Broncos were penalized, but the Lions declined the penalty. Thomas was found dead at his home in Roswell, Georgia. According to preliminary reports, the police gave us um, that the medical issue is the reason that he passed. He was 33, would have been 34 on Christmas Day. A woman who spent the majority of the last six years helping the homeless is being recognized by the CNN network as their hero of the year. Her name is Shirley Raines. Her goal has been to make those who are homeless and broken feel more human. She provides all kinds of services, not just food and clothing, how about a hug when needed to go along with haircuts and makeup services? She was awarded a hundred thousand dollar grant to keep taking her quote beauty to the streets end quote the name of her charity. Congratulations to her. Hey, gumdrops, peppermints, spearmints, candy canes, gingerbread man. Where's, look at the gingerbread man. Where's he? Look at that. It looks like a gingerbread. It looks like a real close up shot of one of those gingerbread houses. Nope. A real gingerbread house. Welcome to the home of Virginia Hoffman in Salt Lake City. It's been a few years in the making. Virginia started with the gumballs, and sometimes she was just like, 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 way like, 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 lie awake at night thinking of, gosh, I know, thinking of, <laughs> I'm just excited about all the candy on, on the house. <laughs> she would lie awake at night thinking of more things to do to the house and then figure out a way to make them and get them attached to the house. The gumdrops are upside down planters. The chocolate brown is brown caulking, so that's not going to be very tasteful. The peppermint sticks are drain pipes. The vanilla wafers are made from foam insulation with a little soldering work and some paint. And when it's all said and done, I hope that if it can just put a smile on anyone's face, if it can just help a little bit, a little Christmas cheer, that that's the whole goal and it will all be worth it. So to answer your question, no, it's not really edible unless you uh, really want to, you know, munch on a brick or something. Uh, <laughs> but okay. I, would, I wouldn't recommend it. On, on the it's bad enough, the candy breaking your teeth, but they're real. Right. Stuff. Mm -hmm. Although that is some real snow, so it kind of fits in Salt Lake City. Well, I've been told not to eat the snow either, David, yeah, for a right. variety of reasons. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> Thank you, sorry. <laughs> One of them right there. <laughs> and finally, today is National Cocoa Day, a little history. The Mayans actually created the first chocolate beverage some 2,000 years ago. The good news about a cup of hot chocolate today, number one, it just may be cold enough for some hot chocolate. And number two, nutritionists say cocoa contains antioxidants and flavonoids, good for heart health and even preventing cancer. So there you go. Oh, good so news. Grab yourself mm. a cup of cocoa today. Mm. It Will does do. sound good. Yeah. Even if it's 55 out. It's That's that time okay. of year, right? Yeah. Kazoon height. A little, <laughs> thank you. Put a little peppermint candy cane peppermint, down in it. Peppermint candy cane, there you some go. marshmallows. Yes, sir. Good to go. That's and it's great. 50 degrees, right? What is it? Yeah. 55. 55. Perfect. E even if it's 80, it's okay. It's December. We're allowed to have cocoa. Really? Yeah. At 80? Really? You would drink a cup of hot chocolate? In, inside in the AC. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Thank you, David. All right. See you in a while. Right now, 907. Yes, 55 degrees. We've all mentioned it. You're watching GMSA at 9. So David Sears will be back with us in just a few minutes to break down weekend sports. We're talking Cowboys, Texans, and our San Antonio Spurs. Plus, Blue Santa program with SAPD making sure more than 7,500 local kids have a present under their tree. We're going to get an inside look at the warehouse in just a bit. Welcome back.
back 11 minutes past the hour. The Blue Santa program is a philanthropic effort by San Antonio police, which helps children and families in and around San Antonio, making sure there are no trees left without a, a present underneath them. Max Massey joins us live from the Blue Santa warehouse. And Max, how's it looking out there? Guys, this has to be what the North Pole feels like. Take a look around, filled with toys. Okay. Workers out here bright and early, oh, filling shit. up the Christmas bags. Take a look right here, yeah, boom. We got everything. We have Pikachu here. We have everything from Hot Wheels, some Tell magnet darts. I mean, anything any local kid could ever want. And joined here with one of the organizers, Officer Orozco. So for those who don't know, we also have St. Nick right here. There you go. I say that because it's our old friend, Nick Solis. Oh, little shout out. All right, so for those who don't know, what is the Blue Santa program? Our Blue Santa program consists of officers this program began in the 70s, mind you. It consists of officers coming together and working in this warehouse. And what we do is we make bags for children in need uh, through applications that we receive through our website and uh, they come to our substations and we give back to the community. This is one of our ways of giving back. And now giving back to the community, how can families, how can anyone out there who wants to help, how can they get involved? Uh, there's several ways that they can get involved. One way is through our website, San Antonio Police Department, bluesanta.org. It has all the information that they need. Simply, it's what we're looking at is any type of donation, whether it's monetary or toys, or they can come by any substation nearest them and deliver it and drop off the toys at any time, which is acceptable for us. So we have Blue Santa right here. So what does the process going forward look like for you guys? Our process this year is, uh, actually it's amazing. We have a really, really good working crew, officers that come together to make the, the, the toys and process. Uh, this year we're at a little over 5,000 children so far. Our goal is a little over 7,000 to 8,000 kids. Wow. In the community to assist. That is amazing. You guys deliver the toys right to the families? Yes, we do. We have a group of officers, as you can see, as the bags are prepared. We put them in these outside storage units and then they're delivered to the subs. At, the, at that point in time, officers get the bags and they deliver them to the children and to the residential areas, of course, where the children are at. All right, Officer Orozco, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, guys, a lot more to talk about, including officer who has delivered presents for about six years now, giving an inside look, all the emotions. We're going to have much more coming up on the news at noon. Stephanie Mark, back to you guys. Um, Max, may I ask a question while we have you there? Do we yes. recognize yes, the sir. person behind you? <laughs> <laughs> This is a St. Nick, guys. This is it. <laughs> if it is it Officer St. Nick Solis? <laughs> it is Officer St. Nick Solis. He grew, he did uh, No Shave November, but he didn't know when to quit. Okay. <laughs> oh, well, Max, tell him we said Merry Christmas and we miss him and give yeah. him a big hug, please, for everybody on GMSA. Will do. Well do. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thanks, Max. You better hug him. Yeah, I know. It was kind oh, of funny. Max, like, we're well, going out there. He's like, we'll do. And he just kind of turned back to the camera. <laughs> uh, if you're new to San Antonio or this program, uh, Nick Solis did traffic yeah. for a number of years here on uh, GMSA um, yeah. on the early edition. Yes, we'll have to yes. hug him at another time. We will. That truly was St. Nick, yes. wasn't it, <laughs> Justin? It yeah. was. Yes. It was, for sure. <laughs> but he was, he was in character. He was yes. motivated and he stayed in character and Merry yep. Christmas. God bless us all, everyone. Yeah. Looking good. Yeah. Looking good. <laughs> good Getting us in the spirit. That's right. Uh, the forecast hasn't done that so much. I mean, the weekend was cold, right? So it was kind of uh, felt a little bit like winter, but now we're right back in this warm, humid stuff. Uh, cloud covers moved back in. So let's look at the time lapse this morning and get an idea of what sort of happened here, how it played out. We had clear skies earlier, temperatures dropped, and then these clouds move in and they act like kind of a blanket and you're seeing these temperatures actually come up a little bit 54 degrees at the airport dew point is at 41 that number is rising with these southeasterly winds at about three miles per hour now it's not going to be a warm day or hot day today uh, temperatures will stay in the 60s but certainly warmer than uh, what we've been looking at uh, at least this morning was for sure and you see the clouds really surging in here the edge of the clouds moving towards Kerrville a place where they got down into the 30s this morning U Valley cloudy there now Carrizo Springs same story and these clouds are going to stick around today they may break up a little bit this afternoon but in general it's going to be a pretty cloudy day 54 degrees again at the airport you see the difference here where we have the clear skies 39 in Junction 41 in Kerrville and 46 in Fredericksburg and looking at the two points they're in the 40s that's still relatively dry but 
these numbers will really start to jump up by tonight and you'll see a lot more humidity in the coming days. Here's a look at the dew point tracker. Dew points jump back into the 60s by Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So it'll be a humid week that may lead to some fog and drizzle during the morning hours next couple days and temperatures really jump up. So we're in the 60s today. Yes, 70s tomorrow, but we'll be close to 80 by Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. Closing in on some records yet again, but I turn your attention to the weekend. 53 Saturday, 52 Sunday. Temperatures fall off. We get a strong cold front Saturday. That will also bring some rain with it. I'll show you that here in just a second. First, though, we do have some showers working in on the Texas coast, just north of Corpus Christi. These showers will maybe work a little bit further inland before falling apart. I don't think we see much shower activity here in San Antonio. Can't rule out a sprinkle or two, but I don't think we're going to see any significant rain today. I really next couple days for that matter. There will be some light stuff, but nothing that's uh, going to accumulate too much. The next storm system is still out over the Pacific. This is the first piece of energy. There's another one behind that that pushes the front through and so some active weather out west this morning. Here's what our future cast looks like. So we'll fast forward to tomorrow 6 p.m. Still lots of clouds as we get into Thursday morning. Here comes the first front. This front doesn't make it through though. And it does get close enough to maybe scare up a shower or two. By Friday, here comes the next front. This is the stronger one. By Saturday morning, it's through. We've got a line of showers and storms with the front. And then behind it, I think we see more showers, cloudy skies. It stays cool. It stays windy. Could even be a little bit of wintry weather up in the Texas panhandle. Just to give me an idea of how strong this cold air will be. So uh, by Sunday, this is moving out and uh, we'll get some clearing uh, after that. Temperatures today up around 64 degrees, mostly cloudy is what we'll call it. East southeasterly winds 5 to 10 and then 76 tomorrow, 79 on Wednesday, as we mentioned, breezy Thursday and Friday. And then here comes that front on Saturday, gusty winds, temperatures falling into the 50s and a 60% chance of rain, guys. All right. Thank you, Justin. We'll be right back. This SA Salute holiday greeting is brought to you by the Republic of Texas Window Company. I'm Hunter Townsend with the Republic of Texas Window Company, and me and my son Xander would like to wish the veterans and first responders a happy holidays. Happy holidays! Hi, welcome back. So big wins on Sunday for the Cowboys and the San Antonio Spurs, while the Texans, well, what can you say about them? What can you say? Dave and Roger here to break down highlights and more this morning. Good morning, gentlemen. Not much. Good morning. I'm not <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to make an interesting segment. point in just a second. We'll get, we'll get to that in just a second. Okay. Cowboys. Ooh. Cowboys wow. survive. I guess that's wow. all you could say. Yeah. Just managed to hold off uh, the Washington football team there at our nation's capital. But, uh, you know, I, I think we have to talk a little bit maybe about also Dak Prescott, the way he's yeah. been playing a little bit. So let's show Not some good. Of the highlights. I Not think, good. I, you know what? People get excited <laughs> about the win. That's great. They're 9-4. Mm -hmm. and four. They're leading the East. They're leading their division. I think they're kind of in trouble. Because their offense is yeah. not good. Yeah. And, you know, they, that's the only touchdown the offense scored yesterday. That was it right there. You're playing a team that's bad, mm -hmm. if not worse. Their defense, Micah Parsons is the defensive player of the year, hands down. Not the rookie defensive player of the year. Ooh. The defensive player of the year, hands down. Who's got nine and a half sacks? Isn't oh, that what Parsons, he has now? Well, I think he's over double figures now. Oh, I think or, yeah, because he had that one sacks. more. Okay. Yeah. Um, but he's now had a sack in six straight games. Yeah. I mean, he's no, been unbelievable. Nobody better, than they play him, nobody better than him. They play him as linebacker, defensive end. Uh, this was the one sort of breakdown that the Cowboys did have defensively. One in sort this of breakdown? Game. <laughs> they had more than one. <laughs> well, they did let Washington kind of get back in. Yeah, this they game. did. Uh, this play here, though, uh, this was the, uh, the, the penalty on Lyle Collins, David. And, yeah. You know, Dak should have now, slid. <laughs> he should have slid. Try to go. You know what? You can't. You can't really blame your offensive lineman for go over there and protecting your quarterback, especially what Dak has been through injury-wise. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind of scary to see your quarterback get shoved out of bounds when he's when you know he's going out of bounds. So that's why that's why all that happened and uh, Lyle got uh, got tossed. Which you know, hey, you got you like to see your guys stick up for your guys. This is what you don't yeah, like that's to what see. That, what in the world was he doing here? I, what was that? What was that? It was a pass interception 
Return for a touchdown. That's what that was. That it was, was bad. Bad Dak. Bad Dak. And again, bad the defense Dak. bails them out. Oh, uh, four turnovers. They get this one here. They even uh, this was Washington's second. Uh, Kyle Allen was in the game at this point. Tyler Henneke had been knocked out, but the defense saves the day for the Cowboys as they improve to nine and four. This is why Randy I say Gregory the Cowboys a nice are in a little bit of trouble because their offense is very, very mm -hmm. stagnant. I mean, you look at they scored two touchdowns yesterday. One was by the defense. You, you, you can't right. get into playoffs and yeah. expect to go far if your offense can't score some touchdowns, especially when you get in the red zone, when your kicker's scoring, th what, he had four field goals and, a, and an extra point? Yeah, and I'm not points? even sure what's happened to the offense here. I mean, obviously some know. injuries. Zeke, uh, Zeke is not 100%. No. He's been bagged up. Tony Pollard obviously missed obviously this game. Obviously out yesterday. Uh, Mari Cooper had the yeah, COVID so. stuff going on. CeeDee Lamb concussion here and there. But their offense has been really hit and miss. All right, Steph, here you go. We're going to show some Texans highlights. <laughs> and Yay! I'm going to point this out. Well, nice to the Texans <laughs> offense scored as many touchdowns as the Cowboys offense. Oh, boy. Oh, How uh -oh. about that? You had Ouch. to go there. Yeah, Ouch. but Ouch. then they but lost. They don't, right, have, so a, they don't have a Micah Parsons. <laughs> yeah, they don't have a Micah Parsons <laughs> on the defense. So, that, so there you go. So that's, that's, and so we've thrown three highlights already. Well, mm -hmm. or... Yeah, this is the longest Texan segment I yeah. think we've done all season. All season. <laughs> yes. It was a, so, a blast. And I think we've seen enough. Okay, good. <laughs> we actually had video. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Amazing, right? Yeah. That's, okay. it. Okay. That's, but, it. that's it. That's a great point, though. This On the Texans, there, we are. Okay. We're waiting for the draft. That's what we're waiting for, the draft. All right, let's yeah. get to... Great point uh, about the offense, though, because the Cowboys offense has been bad. Texans yeah, well, that's why I said I'm not pointing that out. They both scored one touchdown over the weekend. That's not good. The Spurs. So Spurs blown out Saturday night. Go ahead. Do that again. I'm going to be quiet. Yay! Let me have my moment. <laughs> and then, and then I'll say it again. Spurs blown out Saturday night hey, by, by no, Denver. Oh, you're gonna start there? No, yeah. Why don't you back up one night before? Uh, no, that's they, before. That's they the beat pass. Denver the night, yeah. the, the game before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the last night taking on. The Pelicans. New Orleans, yeah. yeah. New, Orleans. New Orleans over here. Uh, yeah. Zion Williams is still not with that team. Yeah, man. he's this probably is... not going to play all year is what yeah. I'm thinking. But uh, yeah. it's been such a weird home stretch here for the Spurs. Mm -hmm. They played the Thursday game, the back-to-back -back games against Denver, and then back-to-back -back games over the weekend. Uh, nice way for the Spurs to come out here. Derek White had himself a good game. Your against man, 24. Derek White, is coming through. This My is like guy, the third Derek or fourth White. game that he's like yeah. really coming. He had 24 last night. 24. Jakob Pertl had 24 last night. He had a double-double. And they should have beat the Pelicans because the Pelicans are beat up yes. and injured and the San Antonio Spurs should have got that win. Believe it or not, with the way the Spurs have played this year, they're only a half game out of That's that 10th spot in the West, <laughs> which gets you into that play-in thing that they do yeah. now. Whatever that is. Yeah. I, so Derek White, the last yeah. six games, the Spurs are six and three. Last six games, Derek White's averaging about 20 points during that stretch. So I think Derek coming back, kind yep. of getting back in form a little bit. Block of Pirtle, we saw right Block there. Of 20, Pirtle. Yeah, 24 points, 12 rebounds for Jakob. And DeJounte Murray just getting these triple doubles. That's it. He did. had another one yesterday. Uh, the longest streak since uh, David Robinson, I think. Eight straight triple doubles. So they had the, the four game winning streak. They got to put together another winning streak. They got Charlotte next. Um, and oh, by the way, Mm -hmm. If y'all remember last Monday, I went on this little Monday. rant mm -hmm. about oh, the boy. Pittsburgh quarterback faking his slide. <laughs> the college. The defensive yes. guys froze, and then yes. the guy scored a touchdown. He was uh -huh. actually up for the Heisman, by the way. He was. He was yeah, he weekend. was. Mm -hmm. He uh -huh. said it wasn't really intentional. It was just kind of instinct thing. But I went on this rant about how that should have been called dead or a flag or right. something. You did. Apparently, the NCAA was listening because that is now the new rule. If a guy fakes a slide, he's automatically down right there, and yeah. you're supposed to. Way to spark change, David okay, Sears. He did. He's been about, he man. was off for the last three days. And, and he's he still like, I'm going to bring this up this morning. That he was, he was not going to let it slide. I slide. saw that. On, no pun intended. I saw that on Friday. I was on the golf yeah. course Friday, and I went, yeah, I see somebody listening. All right. <laughs> Huh. And then I missed the putt. Oh, but that's okay. Boy. Oh, that's yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's an overreaction. I, I don't see I don't see a lot of quarterbacks trying this in the future. Because like we were saying, if they were to do that again, then chances are the defense may take it out on them a little yeah. bit later on. So I think this was a one-time thing. But okay, sure. They they put in the rule. The rule's now in place. <laughs> they fixed it. And that guy's Thanks not going to do that again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. David. Thank you, David. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, guys. All right, that's a wrap right now. There is much more head on GMSA at 9. After a devastating weekend in the Midwest, a heartfelt story rises from the rubble. How a lost photo ended up miles away and is now being returned to its owner thanks to the help of social media.
Top stories are following today. A 36 year old man in the hospital after a shooting on the city's north side overnight. It happened around 1230 this morning on Edison Drive north of Fresno. That's where police say the man was shot three times by another man wearing a black mask. Investigators are still looking for that suspect. And firefighters are trying to figure out what sparked a fire at a food processing plant on the west side. This happened around 930 last night on Madeira Street near South Sarge Amora. Crews say the large building was filled with smoke when they got on scene. They eventually found a cooler on fire. No one was hurt, but damage is said to be over $100,000, mostly because of all the food that was exposed to the smoke. And a lot of questions after a man shows up at a West Side hosp hospital rather with a gunshot wound. So police say a couple in a vehicle arrived at Methodist Texan Hospital in Balcones Heights around midnight. We're told the victim and the woman who was with him were not cooperating with officers. The man is expected to be OK. Happening today, Metro Health has a pop up clinic open right now for those who need their COVID vaccine or flu shot. It'll be at University Park Baptist Church in the Fellowship Hall from now through 3 p.m. over there at 2308 Cincinnati Avenue. All three COVID vaccines will be available at clinics as well as flu shots. They'll also offer the Pfizer vaccine for children ages 5 to 11. And taking a look outside with live can warming up quite a bit actually at 56 degrees. Yeah, this I'd say we consider this warm now after the, the weekend that we had. We got some places down close to freezing over the weekend. Sunday morning it was uh, down below that freezing mark in many spots north of San Antonio. Technically here in town we didn't quite get there, but it was it was awful close. Let's look at the lows this morning. A little different. 43 here in San Antonio. We did get down to 33 in Kerrville, 36 in Bernie Stage, and there's a definitely sort of a line there where the temperatures fell off. And that's because of cloud cover. The cloud cover came in this morning and helped to keep temperatures up here around San Antonio. Out west, though, that was not the case. 39 in Givaldi, 44 this morning in uh, Del Rio. And right now, temperatures sitting in the mid 50s. Things starting to warm up a little bit, although we're not going to see a rapid warm up today because of the cloud cover. As much as it kept temperatures up overnight, also keeps temperatures from warming up all that fast during the daytime. And you can see the clouds there as they're continuing to surge north. Clouds probably stick with us most of the day, so don't expect a lot of sun. There could be a few showers closer to the coast, too. We're detecting a few of those this morning just north of Corpus Christi. So our forecast calls for mostly cloudy skies. High temperature up around 64. East southeast Julie winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. There is more heat on the way this week, followed by a strong cold front this weekend. We'll break down that forecast coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Thanks, Justin. There are many ways to spread the spirit of the holiday season, including donating toys to a local nonprofit organization. Gospel Vision Music Ministries is hosting their 16th annual Christmas toy drive this upcoming weekend and is asking for your help to make sure children have gifts on Christmas morning. Tiffany Huertas joins us from the east side where they're collecting toys with more on the toy drive and inspiration behind giving for the organizer. Tiffany, who's behind this? Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Yeah, a local reverend has been doing this every year in honor of his mom. And this event gets bigger and bigger every year. Just take a look. These are just some of the toys that people have already donated. Last year, they collected 1,800 toys to give to people in our community. Reverend James Robinson, the founder of the nonprofit, and Brandon Johnson with the nonprofit Building Brighter Communities joins us now to talk more about this. Good morning, Reverend Robinson. Talk to us about this toy drive and how it got started and how your mom is the inspiration behind all of this is you know it's, um, my mom mama Boone she fed the homeless for 50 years on the I-35 Durango bridge and before she passed away I started my ministry and God has blessed me and it's just like you said it's gotten bigger and bigger every year and talk to us about the kids that are getting these toys and what type of toys they can donate they can donate any toy whatever y'all like to donate uh, we gladly appreciate it you can donate them at the fish factory on 1555 W.W. White Road, and it is open to the community. What type of toys can people donate? I know we're seeing right behind you some bikes. We're seeing some basketball hoops. We're seeing some bikes. Uh, we got basketball hoops. We got. Uh, we need some, like, girl toys. We got Barbies. Uh, Barbies. Uh, <laughs> we have Bluetooth speakers. We have basketball goals, uh, Tonka trucks. I mean, you name it, we have it, and we're still uh, accepting more. And there's so many people involved. Brandon, how are you involved in your nonprofit? We're coming together with uh, Reverend Robinson, and uh, we're coming together and making this the largest charitable gathering of San Antonio this year, the largest voter registration drive. 
Uh, he's been doing this for 16 years, so it's just an honor to be joining him and bringing our forces together to make this the biggest event possible. And what is the reaction of the community just knowing that something like this is going to happen this weekend? It's always been a, a good reaction. This year is even better. Uh, we're having people from all over the city come out and asking us and how they can donate and be involved. So all are welcome to attend and all are welcome to donate. And Reverend, talk to us about the different events that you all have throughout the year. I know so many people are looking forward to it. Oh, yes, we have the back to school. We have the Thanksgiving, which we just had over 500 turkeys giveaway. Uh, the uh, Christmas event this coming Saturday. Uh, we did the first responders gospel musical. We did the community health fair, the breast cancer awareness. Uh, we, we do just about everything. And one more time, just so that people that didn't get it the first time, where can people donate? And until when do they have to donate these toys? Uh, they can donate to the Little Fish Factory at 1555 Southwest WW White Road. And they can donate all the way up until this Friday at 3 p.m. Uh, is the deadline. This is so exciting. Are you excited? Very excited. Wish it was tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> and remember the Barbies. Don't oh, yeah. forget the don't, Barbies. Don't forget the Barbies. We need a lot of Barbies. <laughs> a lot of Barbies. All right. Thank you so much. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Tiffany. Well, this morning on KSAT.com, more tributes pouring in this morning for Mexican icon Vicente Fernandez. And it's been a year since the Tobin Land Bridge opened. We'll show you some of the critters that have been spotted on that bridge. Plus, a popular local restaurant forced to change its name and voting is now open for our Tamale Showdown. RJ is back mm. with all of these stories. Good morning, Mr. Marquez. Yes. yes, good morning, guys. So we start, of course, with Vicente Fernandez, the iconic Mexican singer, actor, performer, pretty much did everything. He, of course, passed away yesterday morning at the age of 81. Thousands of the fans already paying their respects. They gathered in Guadalajara, Mexico last night, actually at his coffin inside an arena there to say goodbye. Funeral service will take place on his family ranch. And of course, he was a larger than life figure who sang about love, loss, patriotism, and of course, life in rural Mexico with those classic ranchera songs. His death was announced on Instagram, on his official Instagram account, but there was no cause or reason, or they also didn't say where he died. Fernandez was in the hospital for months after suffering a spinal injury in August, and he recorded, of course, dozens of albums and hundreds of songs over a career that spanned six decades. Even the great George Strait, you see right there, tweet about his death, saying Fernandez. This is one of his heroes. May he rest in peace and may God bless and comfort his family. Hasta la cruz, chente. That, of course, from one king to another right there. Indeed. The King George to El Rey Vicente. So rest in peace, Vicente. A lot of good memories there, family gatherings and things like that with his music. So switching gears, guys, the Tobin Land Bridge that connects the two portions of Phil Harburger Park just celebrated its one year anniversary. The bridge opened last year on December 10th. It was designed for wildlife and people to safely cross over Wurzbach Parkway to celebrate the land bridge turning one. City officials shared pictures of the animals that have been spotted on the trail cams over the past years. So they seen everything you could expect to see there at Harburger Park from ringtails to cottontails, raccoons, squirrels, and skunks. And we have this article on ksat.com, which has some of those photos that are towards the bottom of the article. So you'll definitely want to go to our website and check that out. Some interesting little critters there that, uh, you know, using that bridge to their advantage for sure. The word is out. <laughs> Amongst wildlife. Have you seen, like, in person yet? I have not been there. I was going to ask you guys if you guys have I been there. I haven't yet. I've only driven under it mm, yeah. on, okay. on the parkway. Same. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. definitely yep. got to check that out coming up here pretty soon. Okay, guys, a beloved San Antonio burger joint is about to go through a rebranding after a trademark issue with a Houston restaurant chain. This is interesting. Papa's Burgers will now be called the Good News Burgers. This happened after owner Robert Walker said on Facebook the restaurant received a cease and desist notice from Papa's restaurants. Walker said that he was trying to trademark Papa's Burgers, but then notified the restaurant chain. That's when he got that letter from the company's lawyers. He said it's a bit heartbreaking to change the name because it pays homage to his father, but they, of course, are moving on. The restaurant has been open for about nine years and will also add a few more locations. So fans of Papa's Burgers just know that it is now called the Good News Good Burger. News. All right. right. Yeah. And they've always been pretty popular hamburgers here in our city. That's so. what I've heard. Okay, guys, night is something maybe we could all agree on, maybe not. We'll find out with this uh, poll here. Tamales, yes. Sharing or making tamales during the holidays is a time-honored tradition for many Texas families, whether it's beef, chicken, pork, red, green, 
Oh yeah, gotta love all these debates. The Tamales are part of the heritage and culture here at home. And in San Antonio, there's no shortage of restaurants that make delicious tamales sometimes year round. And now we wanna know which restaurant is your favorite. We've compiled 12 tamale locations in our area and want viewers to vote for their top spot. And we will reveal the winners on KSAT News Now. So the way this works is the top six vote getters will move on to the second round. And then the third round where we'll have the final three. So it goes from 12 to six to three. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about this uh, competition coming up at KSAT News Now at 11. We just started it. Mm. A lot of people already voting and getting a little bit of backlash because Delia's is not included in this. A lot of people are like, why is Delia's not included? Because we stuck mm. with more homegrown okay. restaurants. Okay. And they're from the Valley, of course, so yeah. You'll There's be some, hearing from more people. We have some we got a lot of delicious people. dialogue going on here. There we so go. keep us updated. <laughs> Will do, guys. Thank yep. you, RJ. Thanks, guys. All right, time now is 942, about uh, 54 degrees. Yeah, warming right. up a little bit. Yes, indeed. You're watching GMSA at 9. Out of a terrible event comes a heartwarming story. Coming up next, how someone's photograph is being returned to them after it was found miles away. And welcome back. It's 945, a story of hope following all the heartache in the central U.S. after those deadly tornadoes tore through that area. ABC's Will Gans shares the story of a lost photograph and the woman who found it. In between downpours on Friday night, Katie Poston making an unusual discovery outside her home in New Albany, Indiana. At first I thought that it was a note that someone left on my car. Not a note, but a photograph. A woman in a striped dress holding a little boy in her lap. The inscription on the back reading, Gertie Swatzel and J.D. Swatzel. The year, 1942. Pretty instantly realized that this has to have been from home. That was hit. The small piece of family history whipped up with the debris of those deadly tornadoes that tore through Kentucky. Katie sharing her find on social media Saturday morning and within hours, a hit. Someone knew someone with that same last name and they tagged him on the post and probably 30 minutes later he responded. Against all odds, the photo traveling through wind and rain more than 150 miles over the Ohio River from Dawson Springs, Kentucky to Katie's driveway in New Albany, Indiana. Cole Swatzel commenting on Katie's post, wow, to think this traveled so far. This is my dad's grandparents. Cole is working to figure out exactly which of his relatives in Dawson Springs the photo belongs to. And when he does, Katie says she's going to hand deliver the photograph herself. Given that it has traveled this far, I'm like, no way I'm going to let it, you know, slip through the cracks. I think that there's something to be said about what we can do with the things that happen to us. Considering other people, considering what something might mean to someone else. Katie's act of kindness now inspiring others in the area. A Facebook group called Quad State Tornado found items popping up in which people are sharing the photos and other lost items blown into their yards in hope of connecting them with their rightful owners. Will Gans, ABC News, New York. Shifting gears to weather, Justin joins us now. Have we officially hit freezing yet so far this season, sir? Uh, technically in San Antonio, no. no. We okay. got down to 34 over the weekend. Okay. Not quite. Now, outlying areas around San Antonio probably did. We mm -hmm. know Bernie stage got down into the 20s, so technically no. But uh, we are definitely behind schedule when it comes to that. You look at San Antonio, we average about November 30th for first freeze. And uh, yeah, we've yet to get there. So places south of San Antonio have not either. Many places in the whole country have. We'll keep tabs on that. We're going to get some more cold weather this weekend. Don't know that we'll get down to freezing, uh, but it will get chilly yet again. And uh, anyway, that's the latest there as far as freezing temperatures go. Uh, we look outside and we've got cloudy skies here in San Antonio at this hour. 54 degrees. East southeast chilly winds at about three. Dew point is at 41 and rising. There's a look at the cloud cover and uh, it, it surged in from the Gulf of Mexico this morning. Help to keep those temperatures from really getting chilly this morning. We were in the 50s. Now places outside the cloud cover did drop down into the 30s this morning. These clouds, uh, they'll be around today. There could be some breaks here and there, but we're going to call it a mostly cloudy Monday. And you see the difference in temperatures. 54 here in town. It's 39 in Junction where the skies are clear. 50s for most of us. In fact, 57 Gonzalez, 59 Kennedy, 60 right now in Catula. And these dew points are rising quickly now. We look along the coast, we got dew points in the 50s, which isn't all that high, but it's an indication that moisture is indeed surging in. And we'll see these numbers continue to rise throughout the day and over the week. Uh, you look at the bigger picture here, it's still really, really dry across parts of West Texas. So it's going to take some time for this moisture to surge north 
once again, but we're looking for a pretty warm week. With that surge of moisture, there have been a few showers along the coast, really light stuff. Don't think it'll be much of an issue, but there, there could be a few sprinkles or showers uh, there are closer to Corpus Christi. As we zoom out across the country, uh, there is some cold stuff. 27 Minneapolis, 27 International Falls, 32 Omaha. But as I've been saying, I feel like most of this month, it's not bitterly cold. This isn't, uh, you know, sometimes we see numbers much colder than this, uh, this time of year. It just hasn't been uh, super, super cold across the country. And I'll point out that Miami right now is sitting at 80 degrees. That is definitely the warm spot here across uh, the United States this morning. Here's what our future cast looks like. Uh, cloudy skies will really take hold the uh, next several days. Uh, don't expect to see much sun. We get an initial front on Thursday morning or during the day on Thursday. This probably won't make it here, so any rain with this is going to be to our north. Uh, Friday morning, we start to see more energy gathering across the middle part of the country, and this pushes another front through a stronger front, and this will be coming through, it looks like, Saturday morning. With it, gusty winds, much cooler temperatures, clouds, and some rain, showers, and a few storms. And we'll have that activity stick around, I think, through the day on Saturday and maybe through the day on Sunday. So at this point, looks like a damp, cold type weekend with gusty winds. Just a heads up. The rain will begin to move out late on Sunday. Rest of today, we top out at 64, mostly cloudy skies. East southeasterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tomorrow, 76, and then close to 80, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, still mostly cloudy. We could see some fog and drizzle during the morning time. And then there's that front on Saturday. Temperatures dip into the 50s, 60% chance of rain, and still a decent chance for some showers on Sunday as well, guys. We'll prepare for all the changes. Yep. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. Right now, 951, about 56 degrees. We'll be right back. Tomorrow at 9, we're going to get an update on our Share the Shoes KSAT community event. That's right. We'll get the final count on the number of shoes donated by the community for children in need just in time for the holidays. But let's uh, first get a final look at weather. It's 57 right now, 64 this afternoon. So not a big warm up because we have these clouds in place. Actually, gray skies much of this week. So morning fog and drizzle. It's not until the weekend that we get... Uh, some big changes yet again, cold front and cooler and rainy on Saturday. Would be nice if we could get a little break in the clouds by this evening. Stargazers are in for a bit of a treat tonight, depending on where you are. The Geminid meteor shower is set to light up the night sky. And so this is named after the Gemini constellation where they originate. The Geminids produce some of the best and most reliable shooting stars for optimal viewing. And you can get as far away from city lights as possible. It's also best if you want, you wait until after a 2 a.m. because the moon is more than three quarters full and it will begin setting around two in the morning. Jim and it's known to produce more than 50 meteors per hour from the rock comet 3200 Phaeton. I think that's how you pronounce it. Sure. If you can stay up that late, just look up and enjoy the show. Any chance of a break in the clouds here tonight? Not looking very good. Ooh, it, it doesn't look great. I hate to be okay. the bearer of bad news. It does not look good. I think clouds will probably stick around. There could be a few breaks this evening, but I wouldn't think it'd be enough to view the meteor shower. That okay. happens a lot when we're expecting to see stuff. Some type of event yeah. like, like yeah. that does happen. It's not great mm, luck. No, yeah. that's okay. Well, yeah. maybe next time. Thank you, Justin. <laughs> yeah. You guys have a great Monday.